Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So we are going to look at question number six, where it says that this is a reaction between the propanone and iodine and catalyzed by the hydrogen ion. So you notice that the uh, catalyst is not included in the chemical equation, it appears above the arrow, but you don't have to worry about balancing the catalyst, okay? So that's what it means by uh, it doesn't appear in the reaction, but you know that catalyst can appear in the rate equation, okay? Right, the reaction is found to be first order with propanone, so I'll just write that down. Um, and H plus is also first order and iodine is zero order. Construct a rate equation for the reaction. So you can do this uh, fairly quickly where rate is equals to the um, rate constant K times by the concentration of your propanone. The concentration of your iodine will be to the power of zero, which is just one. So that means it, it doesn't show in the rate equation and times by the concentration of the hydrogen ions, which is to the power of one. <clears throat> the following sketches shows three ways in which the concentration uh, varies during the reaction. So you are looking at a concentration time graph. Okay, so you have to be careful because there is another type of graph, which is the uh, rate reaction, uh, sorry, rate concentration graph. Which of the above graphs correctly describe how the concentration uh, changes with time of the propanone? So propanone is first order. So if you remember the concentration time graph of a first order is a curve, okay? So in this case, we're only given, so they're not labeled a, B and C. This graph should be labeled, lab, labeled. Okay. So, and it looks like um, my only option is A. Okay. Actually, I cannot say for sure because second order is also a curve, right? Um, but it is enough to um, to eliminate that A cannot be. Uh, sorry, A is the only option that ca that can give us the graph of a first order uh, in this question, okay? The iodine concentration, iodine is zero order. So for a zero order, the concentration decreases in a straight line. The reason for this is because the rate of reaction is the same at any point, at any concentration, okay? That's the criteria of a zero order. Okay, are we okay so far? Right, um, part D. When carried out in 0 0.1 mole per dm cube of HCl solution. Now, if you're wondering, you go back to the equation, there's no species of chloride in this reaction. So that means HCl is our source of the catalyst, H+. Plus. Okay, so HCl is the source of our H plus ions. Um, okay, so I will prepare a column, uh, sorry, a table of concentration of H plus, which is in mole per dm cube and rate, which is in mole per dm cube per second. Okay. It says that when my concentration is 0 0.1 mole per dm cube, the rate is 0 0.002. They want us to predict the rate of reaction if we had used 0 0.2 mole per dm cube of HCl and 0 0.3 mole per dm cube of HCl. Plot your figures in the following graph and draw a line through the points. Okay. So, we cannot use the rate equation because we do not know the concentration of our uh, CH3CO CH3, which is our propanone. But what we do know is that H plus is first order. And first order means 
that the concentration is directly proportional to the uh, rate. Okay. <clears throat> So if you see going from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, that is an increase by two, by a factor of two, okay? So that means because hydrogen ions is first order, my rate would also increase by two, which is 0 0.002 times two, 0 0.004. Done, easy for that, okay? Same thing for 0 0.0, uh, sorry, for if my concentration increases from 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, that's an increase by a factor of three. If you're wondering how I know that, or um, this one, it's a nice number, so I can do it really quickly. Okay, later on, you will see where the increase may not necessarily be a nice number. Okay, so, um, if my concentration increases by three, my rate would also increase by three. So I just multiply it 0 0.006, okay? And then they want you to plot the graph. The graph is rate against concentration. So, which is the table that we have quickly prepared. And then you just have to plot the points. Um, if you can see it straight away without this table, this table is optional actually, okay? If you already know that hydrogen ion is first order and you can see that at 0 0.1, it's 0 0.002. So 0 0.2, it should go up to 0 0.004 and 0 0.3, it should go up to 0 0.006 because it's directly proportional. But if you cannot see that, uh, then it will take you a little bit longer to answer the question in the exam. Okay, so you just draw a straight line that passes through the origin. And this is how the rate concentration graph would look like for a first order reaction. Okay, it would be a straight line. Okay, the next question, only one of the following outline reaction mechanisms is consistent with the observed kinetics. Okay, so if you look at the mechanism, please let me know if I can move on to the uh, next question. Are you done with this? Okay, thank you. Um, is that Lim? Thanks for the thumbs up. So you want to choose which one A, B, C, D is the correct mechanism that matches with your rate equation. So just now our rate equation was K times by propanone. Um, times by the concentration of H plus, huh? so that means our um, slow step or rate determining step must show propanone and H plus, okay? So if we look at mechanism A, uh, the slow step, contains iodine and that's already wrong okay because iodine does not appear in the rate equation so it must not appear in the slow step second option b we've got in the slow step we've got propanone and hydrogen ion and that is um, correct uh, that agrees with our rate equation okay so the answer is B. Now C, you have to be careful because C have the same steps as in option B, okay? But for C, it's slow step actually involves the intermediate and again 
iodine. So we know that iodine is zero order. It doesn't appear in the rate equation. So it must not appear in the slow rate determining step. Okay, so that eliminates our C. And of course, D is also not correct because um, we've got iodine as well. Okay. Uh, decide which mechanism is consistent, explaining the reasons for your choice. So that means this reaction follows mechanism B. The reason for that is, how do we write the reason? Um, okay, so we can say that the rate equation contains propanone and hydrogen ions only. So these two species are involved in the rate determining slow step and not iodine, okay? So anything that shows iodine appearing in the slow step um, is wrong, okay? Okay, if you're done with this, the next question would be question seven. It's a long question, but um, hopefully uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, you see another question that has the same style, um, you can do it quickly, okay? Can I move on now? Yes, thank you. Question seven. So we've got this uh, reaction between hydrogen peroxide, iodide, and hydrogen ions. So uh, the acidic solution is because there is a presence of the hydrogen ions in the solution. Um, so this reaction is considered to go by the following steps. So this is what we call a chemical equation, overall chemical equation. Step one, step two, and step three is what the mechanisms are, okay? So <clears throat> I hope you are able to differentiate between rate equation and mechanisms. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, hold on now. Okay. The general form is rate equals to K times, okay, so we all already know the general form. This time, um, they don't tell us what the orders are. They write it as A, B, and C instead, okay? Um, first question suggests how the appearance of the solution might change as the reaction takes place. So when you want to see the observation, you only look at the overall equation, okay? what you have at the start and what you have at the end in order to see observation, okay? So hydrogen ions, acids would be colorless. H2O2 is a hydrogen peroxide. If you have, if you remember, you have come across hydrogen peroxide in your practical, it is also a colorless solution. Iodide, a lot of students always think that iodide has yellow precipitate color. Um, or the color of iodine, but iodide is actually colorless. Iodine, however, in solution is a brown solution. Um, the mark scheme also accepts uh, if you write down purple, okay? But uh, usually we see it as brown solution. Purple color for iodine is only when it is in the solid state. Right, but if you um, somehow they accept that answer. Okay. Suggest the values for the orders A, B, and C in the rate equation for each of the following cases. So if you look at this, 
they have three different scenarios. Okay, so I will call them uh, the first one. We'll start with scenario one. Okay, so scenario one, uh, we assume that step one is the slowest overall. Um, so that means step one is our slow rate determining step. If step one is our slow rate determining step, that means we should have hydrogen peroxide and iodide ion appearing in our rate equation. Do you agree? Okay. And the number of molecules actually tells us if it appears once, then it's first order. Okay. So both of these species appears once. So that means um, for scenario one, Okay, I will show you the long um, working here, okay, just to help you with this question once, and I would want you to copy it down, right, even though you can do it and you know how to do it now, um, but you never know what if you, you forget uh, one day and then you really don't remember how to do it. So scenario one suggests that my rate equation is equals to K times concentration of H2O2 times by the concentration of iodide. That's it, okay? So my H2O2 is first order or to the power of one. So A is one. B is the order of iodide, which is also one. C is the order of hydrogen ions. So hydrogen ions don't appear in my rate determining step. It doesn't appear in my rate equation. So it is to the power of zero, zero order, okay? Okay, next is scenario two. So scenario two, is now, so I will erase everything, okay? Scenario two, um, the step two is now the slow step, okay? So step one and step three is fast. In a mechanism, there can only be one step, which is the slowest step. The others will be fast. Okay, so there's only one step in a mechanism that can be a rate determining step. So this time, step two is my slow step. This is for scenario two, a completely different scenario. And I uh, forget about my scenario one just now. Okay, so in scenario two, it suggests that my rate equation is equals to K times the concentration of IO minus times the concentration of H plus. Now, if you look at IO minus, does it appear in your equation? No, okay? So that means IO minus is an intermediate. You see here, you've produced IO minus and then you use it up. So IO minus is an intermediate and if you remember, we cannot include IO minus in our rate equation. So intermediate, which is IO minus doesn't appear in the rate equation. Okay, so I have to Go back. I can't just throw IO minus and say, oh, that means IO minus is zero because technically IO minus is not zero. IO minus is still there in the slow step. It's just that it, I cannot write down IO minus as my uh, in the rate equation. But I need to go back. So what makes up my IO minus? IO minus is made up of H2O2 and I minus. So that means H2O2, um, sorry, not concentration, I'll just use H2O2 plus I minus is equals to 
I O minus. Okay, so I don't use the the arrow because if I use arrow, that means it's chemically wrong because it's not balanced. Okay, so now I know what makes up an my O I O minus, and it is made up of my iodide ion and H two O two. And if you look at iodide ions and H two O two, they appear in the chemical equation. So. I can rewrite my rate for scenario two to be rate is equals to K times H2O2 times I minus, and don't forget my H plus. Is that okay? Okay, so that means my A order of H2O2 is 1. My I minus, uh, order of I minus B is also 1. And order of hydrogen ion C is also 1. That's for scenario 2. Last scenario is scenario 3. Um, I don't have space, so maybe I'll just do it here. Scenario three. So I will erase everything because I'm now starting with a new um, scenario. Okay, so step three is my slow step. I would expect to have HOI, H plus, and I minus. Okay, each of them are uh, one molecule. Okay, so that means they are all to uh, first order. So rate is equals to K times by the concentration of HOI times by the concentration of H plus times by the concentration of I minus. Now, another problem, because HOI is not in the chemical equation. HOI is, again, an intermediate. So you have two intermediates in this mechanism. First is IO minus. You produce, you use it up, gone. The second intermediate is HOI, you produce, HOI, you consume. At the end of the reaction, they will be gone, okay? So HOI, I need to go back. What makes up my HOI? HOI is actually made up of I O minus plus H plus, okay? Again, I cannot put in I O minus because I O minus is an intermediate. So I have to go back again what makes up my o, IO minus? IO minus is made up of H2O2 plus I minus. So how do I write down the rate equation? For scenario three, rate is equals to K times by H plus, that's what I can include, H2O2, I minus, don't forget the one that was um, written down earlier on, H plus and I minus, okay? And I can simplify them to be K is equals to H2O2 to the power of one, I minus to the power of two, since there are two of them, and H plus is to the power of two. So you go back to ABC again. A is the order or the power of H2O2, one. B is the order or the power of iodide, two. H is the order or the power of H plus, which is two. So that's how you 
work out this question for three marks. Um, of course, you don't have to write down this working. Okay, as long as you answer the table correctly, then you can get your three marks. Of course, I give you the um, long working so that you know how to do this um, in the future. Okay, I will let you carry, uh, sorry, copy that out first. Okay, are you done? If you're done, we can move on to the next question. Uh, next part of this question, a study was carried out. Both the concentration of hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen ions were kept constant. And the concentration of iodide was um, investigated or studied. So if we keep the concentration of the two reactants constant, that means we cannot learn or we cannot investigate anything about it okay so here we can only investigate about iodide okay uh, then you get that following curve they want you to calculate the initial rate of this reaction again you need to um, read the graph carefully this is a concentration time graph they want you to find the initial rate so part c initial means at t equals to zero, okay? Rate is change in concentration over change in time. I'll use the word delta. So if you look at the graph, change in concentration is y axis, change in time is x axis. So if you take change in y over change in x, that is the gradient of the graph so you want to find the gradient of the graph at t equals to zero since your graph is a curve you need to draw a tangent that passes through t equals to zero and extend your line so that you can reach a point that has nice coordinates okay so i will try to uh, Mm, that's not a nice line. Maybe something Tina. Maybe there. Okay. So then I will find the gradient at tangent t equals to zero. Um, I'm sure you all know how to, to find the gradient, right? Um, you use the court. What I mean by nice coordinates is you choose a point that lies on the line of the graph paper okay so that you can read off the coordinates easily so for example um the zero value uh, the x value is zero and the y value is 0 0.001 and then for this one the x-axis is 60 and 0 0.0005 now you may use the different coordinates it depends on how you draw your tangent the range of answers accepted would be between 6.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 to 7.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Uh, the units, concentration of a time, mole per dm cube per second. Okay. So can you please work out your rate of equation? OK, 
Okay, the next question is use half-life and show that the reaction is first order, okay. Whenever you see a concentration time graph that is a curve, okay, usually this curve can represent first, second, third, and etc. Okay, you cannot say for sure, oh, it's a curve, that means it's a first order. No, second order is also a curve. The only graph that is not a curve is zero order. This is for concentration time graph, okay? So you need to do a further confirmation that is to look at the half-lives, right? So the half-lives of zero, first, and second order are different. Um, I'm talking about the successive half-lives here. So that brings us to the next part of the question. Use half-life data calculated from the graph to show that the reaction is first order. Okay. For those of you who, who are done with um, part C, you can now move on to part B, that is to work out your half-life, successive half-life. Now, a lot of students always get your half-life confused. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write it out, uh, concentration. So your first half-life would be, um, sorry, half-life is the time taken for the concentration to drop by half. So if you start with a concentration 0 0.001, half of that would be 0 0.0005. And half of that would be 0 0.00025. So that's concentration. You want to write down the time. At 0 0.001, the time is 0 seconds. At 0 0.0005, the time would be, you have to draw a line. And you must show this line on the graph. Okay, that is your working. So you draw a line and then you, so mine is somewhere around 91. Oops, too big, 91, okay? And then half of that is 0 0.000025, which is somewhere, oops, somewhere here. Okay, unless I'm a straight line. And somewhere there, okay. Uh, the time is, for me, it's 182. Okay, the reason why I write this out is so that you can see the first half-life, T half number one is 91. And the second half-life, T half number two is 182 minus 91, which is also 91, okay? A lot of students always get confused and they say the second half-life is 182 minutes. Graphically, your first half-life would be, would be this portion. Your second half-life would be that portion, 182 minus 91 not from zero, okay? That is not your second half-life. That's, that's actually your first half-life plus the second half-life. <clears throat> okay. Um, what else did I want to... Yeah, so they want you to show the reaction is first order. So we say that the half-life, the first two, the first and second half-life is constant. So if it's a constant half-life, then it's a first order at 91 second so 
the reaction is first order with respect to iodine. WRT with respect to iodine. You have to spell it out. Um, don't be lazy like me. Um, it's okay for me to do it because I won't be sitting for the exam, but you need to spell it out. Okay. Uh, the accepted answer for the half-life, you can give anywhere between 90 to 94 seconds. Okay. So you will be reading um, the graph different, differently. So that's why there's a range of accepted values. So if you get between 90 and 94 seconds, that is fine as well. Um, so be careful with the unit as well, because in the graph, they use second as the unit for time. Okay. Next, we want to work out the orders with respect to H2O2 and H+. Please let me know when you're done with this. You done? Okay, next question will be to use the following data to deduce the order. So we already know that iodine, iodide, sorry, iodide is first order. So we now want to work out the order of H2O2 and H+. Uh, you're given a table of the con changing the concentration and also the effect on the rate. Okay, so I will just call this experiment one, two, and three. The easier one to work out with is to find the order of H2O2. The reason for that is because in experiment one and two, I am keeping the concentration of H plus constant. That means I can just focus on H2O2. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, again, this will be a long working, but if you can do it by seeing it from the table straight away, oh, sorry, there's no change here. From seeing the table straight away, then that's okay as well, okay? So for part E, um, experiment one and two, I'll teach you how to explain later on. So the concentration goes from 0 0.05 to 0 0.07. That is an increase in 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.05. So this is what I mean by not a nice number, okay? But that is an increase in 1.4 because you take the bigger number, divide by the smaller number. So your rate goes from 1.0 to 1.4. And that is also an increase in 1.4. So you see the concentration and the rate increases at the same number, okay? They are directly proportional. You increase concentration by 1.4, you increase the rate by 1.4. You increase the concentration by 5,000, the rate also increased by 5,000. So that means, H2O2 is first order, okay? So how do we explain? 
uh, from experiment one and two, you have to mention which experiment you are using to deduce the order. Okay, from experiment one and two, the concentration of H2O2 increases by 1.4. The rate increases by 1.4 as well. Therefore, H2O2 is first order. Done. Okay. If you can see it from the table, times 1.4, the relative rate is also times 1.4. Okay. The second one is the problem here. To find the order of the hydrogen ions. Okay. Because if you take, you cannot take one and two because you're not changing the concentration of H plus. So how are you going to investigate the order of H plus? You can take experiment one and experiment three where your H plus increases from 0 0.05 to 0 0.07. That's by 1.4, but your concentration of H2O2 is increasing as well. Okay, so this is what we call the combined factor and you cannot run. There is no other way, but both your H2O2 and H plus will be changed together at the same time. And you want to study the effect on the rate as you change this to, <coughs> sorry, as you change these two values. Okay, um, I will take, uh, it doesn't matter if you want to take one and three or two and three, I will just take experiment two and three. Okay, so the concentration, there are two concentrations that, that's changing here. The uh, H plus goes from 0 0.05 to 0 0.07. That's an increase in 1.4. Your H2O2 goes from 0 0.07 to 0 0.09. And that is an increase in 1.29. Okay, so that means an increase in 1.4 and increase in 1.29 will result in your rate going from 1.4 to 1.8. And that is... An increase in 1.29. Okay, so this increase in 1.29, increase in rate, in rate is actually a combination of increase in 1.4 of H plus and increase in 1.29 of H2O2. So this is H plus. This is H2O2. We already know that H2O2 is first order. So if we increase H2O2 by 1.29, the rate should increase by 1.29 as well. Okay. And can you see that increasing the H plus actually does not have any effect on the rate? Can you see that? So this increase in 1.29 is actually only contributed by the increase in H2O2. So this suggests that H plus is zero order. Explanation. Explanation. Again, looking at experiment from experiment two and three. Okay, um, same thing, H2O2 increases by 1.29. Concentration of H plus increases by 
uh, 1.4. The rate increases by 1.29. This since H2O2 is first order, increase in concentration of H plus does not have effect on the rate. Therefore, zero order, um, therefore, sorry, therefore H plus is zero order. Okay, you have to somehow describe the mathematics that you do earlier on in words. Okay, you cannot just leave everything like this and you expect them to uh, understand your working, okay? So you have to convert this information into words. Um, then only you can, you can make a deduction and say that means H plus is zero order, okay? So I will just zoom that out. <clears throat> when you're done please let me know and then we will just do the last bit of this question where it wants you to uh, from your results, deduce which of the three steps is the slowest step, okay? So that means we use our answer, uh, our order for I minus H2O2 and H plus, okay? So part F, part F, I will just write down the rate equation since I know all their orders already. Uh, iodine just now was first order. H2O2 is first order and H plus is zero order. So H plus doesn't appear in the equation. So you need to go back to the previous page and choose um, the step, either step one, step two, and step three that shows only iodide and H2O2 appearing in that one step, okay? And if you can see step one, contains H2O2 and I minus only, okay? So that means appears on step one. Therefore, step one is the slow rate determining step. 